raising the IQ and bankrolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn. Bet. Win. Better IQ. Hey, good afternoon, and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lang, and for today, we have a a special guest who is here to discuss his uh, newly published book, The Logic of Sports Betting. There are not enough sports betting books out there, and I'm going to tell you this one, uh, the uh, topics in there, uh, the discussion, absolutely uh, excellent. And uh, topics in today for today's show, specifically going to be the concepts of live or in-game betting. The author, his name is Ed Miller. Uh, let's welcome into the uh, Better IQ podcast. Uh, Ed, how are you this afternoon? Hey, thank you very much. I'm great. The book? The Logic of Sports Betting, which you can pick up uh, from uh, Amazon. Uh, real quick, Ed, why don't you, you know, some of our listeners, uh, uh, particularly those that participate in uh, poker, uh, which is kind of a, your background, maybe uh, familiar with uh, you, but for those who are not, uh, why don't you tell our listeners a, a little bit about who you are, uh, your background, and particularly uh, your uh, your tie-ins here uh, to uh, to sports betting. Yeah, sure. I uh was a software developer. Originally, I worked for Microsoft, and uh, that job kind of didn't work out. But right at the time that job kind of fizzled, I uh, I kind of was playing poker as a hobby, and I got good enough to play full-time. So I kind of quit my job, moved to Las Vegas, started playing poker full-time. Uh, poker obviously exploded right around that. That was like the year Chris Moneymaker won the World Series of Poker. So my timing was was pretty phenomenal <laughs> for that. And, uh, you know, poker kind of blew up. I, I did that, you know, full time for a few years. And then uh, I decided to kind of share some of my knowledge uh, via books. I didn't really like putting in all the hours playing as much anymore. I got kind of burnt out on that. But I said, what can I do that's not, you know, grinding at a table all day long? And, and so I switched to books. So I've written a bunch of poker books. And then about four years ago, I, I noticed the daily fantasy thing was was taking off and, you know, in, in gambling – you know, I, I learned my lesson from poker that you kind of want to be where the where the where the interest is because because that's where the marketing money goes. That's where you know a lot of the money that was to be made in you know 15 years ago in poker was because outside companies were just you know fire hosing money into the economy via marketing via you know bonuses and and, and all this stuff and you know so so I switched to sports when I saw that was kind of happening in the sports area. Good stuff. Spe- speaking of daily fantasy, I mean, daily fantasy is a, uh, what, what are you real, real off topic here? What are your thoughts on daily fantasy? It's you're right. Three or four years ago, it was like, man, this is the new thing. And now you be, it's, you know, particularly with the, with all the sports books popping up all of the, uh, the country, uh, you almost don't hear about it anymore. Yeah. I th- well, so I, I was kind of, I, so I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, there, I, honestly, I've barely ever had more fun gambling than I did when I was, you know, full time jamming lineups into Daily Fantasy. Uh, it's just, it's just very fun, especially if you have a good angle on it. The problem with it, from my perspective, and I, um, is, is the, I don't think the game's very well built. The, the, the kind of main FanDuel DraftKings game, the, the big tournaments with the big prize pools. Uh, I, I, because what it does is it, it provides a really poor experience for like your casual player who just wants to kind of research for 15 minutes and stick in a lineup. It, it's, it's just, it has to do with the actual rules of the game that make it hard for somebody with that, you know, with, you know, who's got a job, enjoys sports, just wants to play some daily fantasy. It makes it really hard for them to, to, to win. And uh, I think that's what happened to it. Honestly, I think, I think just enough people got burned out on it where, you know, they tried it and they were like, you know what, I'm not winning. Let's, let's go, you know, do something else. Yeah, Ed, uh, that's Ed, my Ed, opinion about kind of kind of the main problem. Yeah, Ed, what you're what you're really saying is the sharks came in is what happened. Yeah, I mean, and 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 it has to do with the way the game's built. I mean, the, the game could have been built differently. I mean, there's always going to be sharks no matter what. You know, I mean, that, that's why we play, right? I mean, we we wouldn't play this game if you couldn't be good at it. Right? Yeah. we wouldn't we wouldn't bet sports if you couldn't have an angle and couldn't have you know if it's just a slot machine you're just pressing the button you know, a lot of us wouldn't be involved at all, wouldn't hold any interest. But but at the same time, you got to build the game where 
the Sharks, you know, the, the, where the edge they can build isn't kind of prohibitive. And I think that's what happened with the, with the Daily Fantasy. Yeah, I've heard from I, – I never got into it. Um, you know, I got enough on my plate with, uh, with sports betting. But just in talking with friends, um, similar kind of situations where they got into it. Uh, they only have X amount of hours in the other day and they got burnt out. And I think that burnout was tied to, you know, they couldn't win. And, right. and, and even, even novice guys had the understanding that it's like, uh, we're up against it. We got no chance. And then they eventually just kind of, yeah, end up- there, there's a difference between knowing, okay, I'm paying rake, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to end up behind at the end of the year. There's, there's a difference between knowing that. And no one like just getting your face kicked in every day. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> I, I, and I think I think kind of the you know the the daily fan. Not to not to denig- I you know, and I like those companies and you know, and, and as I said, I've never had more fun playing playing a gambling game than those games. But you know, I mean, it, it's I think there's there's a little bit. It was a little rough. All right, let's get to uh, the book again. The logic of uh, sports betting you can pick up uh, on uh, Amazon and some of the topics. Uh, at absolutely fascinating, you know, specifically, um, I, I think helping the reader better understand uh, how sports books work. Uh, more importantly, how the betting markets work. We talk a lot about that on the uh, the Better IQ uh, podcast. Uh, but one topic that caught my eye, and one that I think that we are going well, I, I don't think I know that we're going to see grow considerably here in the coming months, the coming years with the expansion of legalized sports betting in the United States is live or in-game betting. I'm going to call it live betting here on the uh, for the remainder of the uh, segment. So, Ed, uh, let's discuss for the listener out there, I would assume most people familiar with the live betting, talk about the you know what the current live betting market looks like But more importantly, what can we project it to look like again uh, a year or two from now as uh, sports betting continues to grow in the United States? Yeah, so so um, just kind of out the gate, I want to tell your listeners that I'm actually starting a company that's working in live betting. We're going to supply live in-play odds to um, sports books for American sports. So uh, we're kind of hoping that we're going to be part of the change that, that I'm about to talk about. But this, this is, you know, so, but at the same time, maybe I'm a little bit biased. You know, I have my, I have my vision where to go and, you know, maybe, maybe other people don't agree with me. <laughs> but anyway, just, just with that out of the way, um, you know, the, the, the thing to understand about live, so live betting, the idea is, you know, when the sport, sporting event is in progress, you're able to make bets on the event. It could be just on the money line, who's going to win the game. It could be on a point spread on a total. It could be on props. It could be on, on a whole menu of, of possible bets. But the, you know, let's just talk about the, the core right now. Is You're going to be able to bet money line, spreads, and totals you know, kind of throughout a game. Now the question is, you know, where do those come from? If you go to you know, New Jersey that has a bunch of mobile apps, right, and, and, and you sign up for accounts in New Jersey – and you open those apps, they're going to have – all those different sports books are going to have in-play menus for you. So you're going to be able to bet on in-progress American games. And, uh, you know, the, the question is, you know, if you think about it, like where do those numbers come from? Is there somebody like in, in, the, in the dungeon in every sports book like madly scribbling lines, you know, to put up for every baseball game, you know? And, uh, you know, the answer to that is no. Uh, where the lines come from is well. So, the answer to that is sort of yes, sort of no. But th- but there's there's companies that are um, dedicated third party companies that provide these odds as a service to a sports book. So, for instance, if you're at your sports book X Y Z, you open the app, you look at a number. Well, that number, the final number, obviously comes from the sports book, but that number is informed by a number. Other company, other companies that supply information, supply a data feed to that sports book with their suggestions for what the lines should be. And let me ask you this: um, When I think, and I know live, live betting is obviously more. When I think of live betting, I think of Europe markets, European markets. I think of soccer. Uh, but for Americans, yep. perhaps you know a little bit more familiar. When I think of live betting, I think of I think of Pinnacle. I, I, I really, I really do, and, and they really market that. Uh, that heavy. So uh, you mentioned where, like, you know, where's Penny getting their stuff from? Um, is it in house? Is it third party? 
How, we're, so we're, I, I, I'm not aware of their, you know, any particulars. You know, to be honest, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not operationally aware of any, you know, exactly how any one sports book does it. You know, if I had to guess, you know, not talking about them in particular, but in general, you know, it will be some combination of, you know, they're going to get a data feed from a third party provider and they're also going to have a trading staff in house that, you know, compiles that information, adds it to information that's coming in maybe from their customers. Who are their customers betting? You know, let's say it's an NFL game. And again, I'm not, to, I, I have no insight into, yeah. into any one sports books, you know, internal operations, but you know, a typical example would be, let's say it's like the Colts and the Titans are playing out on a Sunday night and, you know, they got to put a lineup. Well, they have they have a company. Maybe they have two or three companies. Maybe they have subscriptions to two or three different companies offering them, you know, a suggestion for what line to put up. And then so they and then probably they'll have a trading staff that accepts those suggestions, looks at them, also looks at the action they're getting and, and, and then maybe make makes a decision about where to put the line based on that. So if they're getting, if, you know, if the, if the data says, okay, put, put the Colts at minus 150, but then like every one of their customers is just banging the Colts, they might say, you know what, well, I'm going to put the Colts at one, 170 instead, you know, where, you know, so, so it, that, would, that would be, I think, a pretty good example of how most, most uh, operators would, would deal this kind of thing. Okay, let's move to the next uh, the next transition here. Uh, most people listen, obviously, you know, you understand what uh, live uh, betting uh, is. They've seen it at their local sports book or their online or their off screen uh, sports book. Uh, maybe they made a bet or two. I- I'm sure uh, that a numerous uh, people uh, have. So, uh, Ed, kind of talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of betting live. I I, I will say this. I I think it's. I'll get to it here in a minute. I, I'm curious to hear, you know, some of your, uh, you know, your thoughts here. So again, advantages and disadvantages of betting live games. So the the, the big advantage for the better is that, that this is a hard problem for the sports books to solve. You know, with how do sports books make a number pregame? Well, it's what they do is 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 you know, let's say it's a football week, right? So there's an NFL game on Sunday. Someone's going to put up a line, you know, maybe the previous Sunday. Or Monday morning, you know, and, and they're going to have put a small limit on that line. And that line's, you know, going to be their best guess. But, you know, maybe they don't. Whoever made that line is, is, you know, doesn't have all the information. Well, okay, that line gets pounded a couple times. But they're only getting pounded for a couple hundred bucks at a pop. You know, after a while, you know, they, they take a bet, they move the line, they take a bet, they move the line. Eventually, they get to a line that's, you know, pretty reasonable that nobody can look at and be like, oh, that's stupid, you know. So, and then by the time, you know, Sunday comes around, the game day comes around, that line's really in, in pretty good shape. It's really been vetted by the entire, you know, sports betting community. In play is completely different because in play, every line is a new opening line, right? Every time if it's, you know, if it's the middle of the second quarter and the Colts just scored a touchdown and they're up 14 nothing, you know, quick, what's the line, <laughs> you know? And, and, and there's no vetting process. There's no price discovery process. There's no take a bet and move the line. It's you got to come with it and you got two seconds, you know? So, and, and that's really the hard problem for sports books because, and this is the problem we're actually trying to solve with our company is, is, I mean, man, there's a lot of games going. You got baseball games going. I mean, there's, there's, you know, sometimes 10 games going at a time. You got to keep track of all of them. You got to make lines on all of them. You know, it, it's it's a huge job, and it's hard to really nail it on, on for every game at all the time. And that's that's really the core point is that is that there all the sports book can really do is kind of take their best whack at it, you know, and move on. And um, you know, and and so what does that mean? That means that they're going to have, you know, an algorithm, right? So they're going to have a, how are those lines going to get made? Well, there's going to be some kind of model or some kind of computer algorithm that's going to take in the information from the game state and then turn that into a line. Well, that process can go wrong. And we talk about this in the book. Again, the book's called Logic of Sports Betting. There's three main ways that process can go wrong for the, on the sports book side. Way one is they can just have the wrong information about the game. Like, let's say, you know, the Colts just scored a touchdown and then they go for the extra point. They muff the, you know, they muff the snap. The, the kick's no good. It's thirteen nothing. Well, sometimes, and I'll tell you, I see this. You know, they'll make that line like it's fourteen nothing, 
right? So they'll make every their total will be one point high. Their you know their spread will be one point off um, because they just have the wrong information about what happened in the game. You know, and they'll fix it. But there's a window of time there where the, that line is just made with the wrong information, and that actually happens you know quite a bit. As I say, it's a big problem. I mean, you you try to keep track of every. I mean, think about every college basketball game going on a Saturday. You know get every single score right on every single game all the time. it's it's a hard job and it's 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 not really set up you know to 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 nail it right now so that's a place you can find mistakes another place you can find mistakes is when there's information that's in the game that you can see with your own eyes but that's not necessarily in the hard numbers i mean people talk about injuries all the time i mean if you see you know aaron rodgers you know just takes a sack and gets up and he's you know rubbing his collarbone or something I mean, you have information by watching that on TV that maybe the computer or whoever made that line, you know, maybe doesn't have when they make that line. Or, you know, it doesn't even have to be that. It can be, you know, you just see these two teams are coming out, you know, the totals, you know, in a football game is 51 and, and, and everybody's running the ball for the first, you know, quarter. And you're like, oh, man, how are they going to score 51 points if they're, you know, everyone's running the ball? You know, and, and, and that information may or may not be in... The, the algorithm that they're making the live line with. So, so that's the second way you could take advantage of information from the game that isn't necessarily in the line, and you have to think about what would and wouldn't be in the line. And then the third mistake, which is, which is honestly going to be hard to catch as just, a, um, as just a, a better, but that I see it all the time because I do this for a living. I make these models for a living. I look at these lines for a living, um, you know, or at least full-time for our business, is, um, you know, they could just make a math error. I mean, they could just they could just have all the information right, and then the line they just come up with is just wrong <laughs> for the information they came out with. And, you know, I mean, who knows? I mean, they got to debug that thing. <laughs> you know, and, but I do see that. And you'll see that, you know, the way I see that is, 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 you know, in a certain part of the game, like, you know, going into, let's say it's always with seven minutes in the second quarter, their totals just run high. Let's just say that's the mistake. And, and you'll see that with some of these, where, where just when it gets to a certain point in the game, they just, you know, game after game after game after game, they're just putting up the wrong number. Yeah, one thing I've noticed with the, um, just in my, the off-screen sports books that I use, and, you know, they're different lines. Um, they're, they're, they're different lines, and that's more, that's another exposure. And it's funny, my, my next point, uh, Ed, is to me, is the juice worth the squeeze for the sports books? Obviously, the fact that they're offering live betting uh, is so prevalent. They, they're, they've obviously made money off of it and feel as if they can make money off of it moving forward. But you talked about uh, just just the hassle involved in it. You know, I, I guess I'm going to try to put myself in the bookmaker's shoes. It's just like, man, if I just offer good old-fashioned NFL lines over time, I know I'm going to win. Uh, but, you know, right. again, you, you, you mentioned that the, uh, the, the there's – there's holes in the system and you know, if there's holes in the system, there's always going to be people that are going to be out there trying to take advantage of it and do take advantage of it. So are you surprised that so many sports books are going this route with again, how big of a hassle it is compared to just setting a line on Sunday and monitoring the market as you go uh, throughout the week for Saturday's college football game? Right. I mean, that's a, that's a very good question. I mean, I, you know, I, I think so. So first of all, you know, that, that's another way, by the way, you know, I, I do want to answer the specific question, but what you said about how you'll, you'll have several sports books open and they'll have different lines, that's a really key point. Because let's say, let's say you've got one book and they've got, you know, Packers, you know, minus 50, and then you've got the other book and they've got Vikings, you know, plus 148, right? You know, so they've got two different money lines. And when you, you know, each one of them has like a, you know, a 40 cent you know, spread on them. But if you pit one against the other, it's only a two cent spread, right? It's, it's only like minus 50 on one side and plus 48 on the other, you know, and you, and whichever side you want to bet, you could bet. And then let's say you see that, that opportunity. And then you're watching the game and you're like, you know what? Aaron Rodgers kind of looks off today. Maybe he's not back from his injury yet or, or whatever, whatever your observation is that supplements, you know, while you're watching the game. Well, you can put that into practice by going to bet the four, you know the plus forty eight at the at the one sports book, so so it's really a, a, extremely valuable to the better 
when there are, you know, all these different numbers at all the different sports books. Now, to answer kind of your, your more direct question, I mean, I, I think I, I think it's true. I mean, I, I, I think I think what the sports books are doing is they 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 expect it to get better. You know, I, I think that's what it is. And, and honestly, I think it will. I mean, this is again, you know, this is this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm working on full time. I am trying to make it a little better for the sports book. I'm trying to make this a product that's that's fair that they can book. Now, now. So the, the part of the way they deal with what you said. So what you said is this is a real hard problem for sports books. If they put up the wrong number, they're going to get beat. Right. And, and that's true. So. Sometimes what they do is they try to protect themselves a little bit. They put in things like delays, you know, so, you know, if you click in your bet, you know, on some sports books, you know, the little timer starts going and it, it waits for eight seconds. And and then, you know, you get your bet or don't get your bet. Well, that's not network lag. I heard somebody said, oh, I thought the you know, the, the network was just like, no, 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 is, no, no, no. What, what, what that is. Is that's the sports book just sitting on your bet for eight seconds? They're like, we're gonna make a decision on this in a few seconds. Well, what can happen? <laughs> what can it? What can happen in those eight seconds? Well, first of all, I mean, if the game's going, obviously, you know, something can happen. The score can, you know, someone can score, or you know, a big play could happen. But let's let's say even the games. So, so that's, I mean, that's in my opinion. By the way, don't do not bet into a delay while the game's going. You just you got no shot because because the you're just behind. You just don't know. You're, you're constantly, your, your, your TV feed is 10 to 20 seconds behind. That's, that's the rough numbers. So yeah. by the time you see it on the TV, it's, you know, 15, 20 seconds after it actually happened on the field. So that's the first problem. If you're betting while the game's going, the second problem is, you know, often if they're going to sit on your bet for an extra eight seconds, well, that's an extra eight seconds of things that can happen while they're waiting to decide if you, so don't bet during that situation, but let's say you're betting during a timeout, right? Which is when I recommend you bet in play it's bet during timeouts, because then at least the, the, you know, what's happening, everyone knows what's happening in the game to that point. The, what they could be doing during that eight seconds is let's say they put up a terrible number by accident. They make a mistake. They got the wrong point. They got, they, you know, they, they put up a, a doozer is what I call <laughs> You know, they put up a doozer. Well, what's going to happen? They're going to get slammed with bets on the good side, right? You know, and, and often they're going to see that within a few seconds. So what, a, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying any particular operator does this, but I guarantee you this is part of the process for some operators is what they use that eight seconds for is they're looking at, are, are we getting slammed on one side and then, if they get slammed too hard, they're going to say, you know what? We don't want any of this. Let's fix this and try again. You know, so, so that's, that's what's happening. So, so that's kind of what they're doing as a countermeasure to protect themselves um, because they know they're vulnerable on this stuff. So w- my vision for where this industry is going, where the in-play betting is going is let's do a better job. Let's not make those mistakes. You know, you can't get rid of all your mistakes, but, the, but let's, let's try to put out the very best in-play product we can. Let's try – let's not have a lineup all the time. We, let's not have a lineup while, you know, Adam Thielen is running down the field. Is he going to score or not? I mean, that, that's just a, a dumb time to bet. The, the good time to bet is when the game goes to timeout. Everyone has the same information. Everybody knows what the score is, you know. The, you know, you don't have to go to the bathroom. What do you do? You open up your betting ad. It's out at the game's in commercial. You open your betting ad. You look at the line. You say, I've been watching this game. Do I have an edge on the line? To me, that's the in-play product. Is, is it's a commercial. It's a timeout product. That's when it's fair. That's when everyone has the same information. And that's, and that's a much easier problem for sportsbooks to solve. They can solve that problem. Much easier. They can put up a line 15 times a game and have that line be, you know, Know, good enough that you know that they can expect to win you know that that's my opinion um but 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 at the same time it's it's not so good that if you're a smart better if you put the time in if you watch the game if you put the work in then you can't beat that line you know sometimes so so to me that's that's my vision of where where in play betting should be going yeah, one of the ways you mentioned that they, first of all, my lifetime success rate of getting bets in, live bets in, is like 32%. Um, right. You know, it, yep. with them taking off the board or one, you know, not only taking on the board, one of the ways they protect themselves is let's say it's a, uh, you know, a, 
a basketball game and there's a live line of minus three and a half and they take a lot of bets, well, their deterrent is maybe, we're, okay, we're not going to take it off the board because we like you guys so much, but they're just going to slam a bunch of juice on there where all of a sudden it's, I got to lay three and a half minus 180, which, you know, any, right. ser- any series better uh, more often than not, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm just going to wait for a uh, better line, but you know, the, the, the timing factor, and that's kind of, you know, two of the things that me personally, that I I've learned when it comes to live betting and Ed, you brought up a good point for those out there that are new, stick to the timeout, stick to, you know, but, but if you're doing it on the fly, um, you gotta be dialed in. I mean, you know, you can't have your kid running around, uh, you can't be texting on the phone. I mean, you got to have blinkers on. You really do because these lines are moving extremely quick. And number two is, and, and Ed, you didn't talk on it. I'll jump in and I'll say it. I've talked to a lot of people, just average rec betters, things like that, and they win a couple of live bets. Here's the prototypical live bet that people win on. They have a favorite who gets down early. They bet that favorite at a timeout. The favorite comes storming back and wins, and they mistakenly think that live betting is easy to beat. And I've done this long enough, Ed, I know you have as well, where uh, live betting is just as hard, in my opinion, as you know, uh, regular betting. Uh, I know there's some guys out there that have a lot of success, but don't think that it is – don't think that it's easy. There's a reason why sports books put uh, banners and flashing lights on their website saying live bet the Colts Titans game. What Ed was talking about. Um, it's because they feel uh, they have an edge and more often than not, they, uh, the do uh, they do uh, the book, the logic of uh, sports betting. Uh, you could pick that up on uh, Amazon. Ed, let's kind of transition. You, you hit on it a little bit in the, you know, your last uh, uh, segment. Let, let's, let's talk about though. Some of the things that better should focus in on, uh, when betting live, you hit on the timeouts. I think that is an excellent uh, observation. Obviously, anticipation is one of the first things we think about when it comes to uh, live betting. We're seeing something take place. We need to anticipate uh, moving uh, forward. You know, one strategy Ed, I, I kind of tell people when they start, maybe they've never live bet a game before in their lives, is maybe try to pick a game that you have. doesn't need to be strong, but maybe you already have an opinion on rather than just hunkering down having no clue on the Colts-Titans game, but saying, hey, I'm going to jump in. You know, say you like the Warriors plus two. Maybe you wait and you want plus three and a half or four. If you're patient, uh, you'd be amazed at uh, some of the numbers you can get. So, uh, Ed, uh, what are some of your kind of things that, you know, you recommend that bettors could focus in on when it comes to live betting? So, again, the biggest opportunity as a better with live betting is, is, is to bet the mistakes. To me, that's what you're trying to do. Every bet is every bet is independent, right? If 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 you know, you know what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out when they put up a mistake line, and you want to bet that mistake. And they make plenty of mistakes again because I I told you how hard it is to get it right. You know they do make plenty of mistakes. So then the, then the question is, how do you find the mistakes? Well, I find the mistakes fairly easily. They pop right out at me. I have models for all these. If I'm watching the game, I have a model. My model makes a number. I see a different number. Often I can, I, I can, if, if there's a difference, I can often look at their number and be like, oh, they, they, you know, they thought that was a two and not a three. Or, you know, they, they, you know what I mean? Like, like in a basketball game, for instance, it'll go to commercial. Someone will, you know, make a shot from near three point range, but maybe their foot's on the line. You know, may, maybe I saw it clearly. Their foot's on the line. And for sure, that's a two. The line's giving them credit for three, right? So my answers off by a point you know so that pops out right at me because i've got a model i know exactly you know when i'm different often i could just say well that's why i'm different i like my side you know i'm gonna bet it but okay you don't have a model you haven't been (laughs) doing this for four years what can you do well the the main thing i think you can do is you can a you can look for those situations so you look for those situations when it goes to commercial and and something a little bit it's it, it's a little unclear what the what the game state situation is. You know when it's going to timeout, is it, it was there a foul right before they went to commercial? You know, and, and and could it be a shooting foul or or maybe it's a charge? You know, and maybe you have a strong opinion one way or the other. You know, you saw it. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna rule that a charge. You know, and and then you're looking at that line and 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 the line is kind of priced like well maybe they made the basket. You know, you know may or maybe they're gonna get the the you know the the shooting foul shot. You know. Or, um, you, you know, situations like that. And then what you want to do 
is you want to look for situations where you can compare one book against another. Because that's really that's really where your your strength is as a better. It's it's like it's like if you're a musician. I don't know how many people listening are musicians, but like they say, perfect pitch is really rare. Perfect pitch is you can listen to a note and you can just be like, that's an E flat. You know, very few people have that ability to just look at one thing in isolation and nail it. What people are better at is comparing two things. They say, okay, well, this this is this here. Here's another thing to compare it to. You know, what's the difference between the two? And, and to me, sports betting is exactly the same way. That's where you're going to get your edge in play is when you can compare one, one book's line to another or you can compare a book's line to what it was at the last time out, right? So, so the simple example I gave you before earlier where you've got like minus 150 here, you've got plus 148 there. Let, let, so let's, let's say it's the basketball game example now. Let's say it's, you know, you've got the, the Warriors and the Raptors. You know, the game just went to commercial – um, there was a foul, you know, it looked to you like it was probably going to be uh, an offensive foul. You know, you're not sure. Nobody's sure, <laughs> you know, but, but you saw it and you, you're like, I think I know how they're going to call that. And then you see two lines and one line is priced like it's a, like it's a defensive foul, like it's a shooting foul. The other line's priced like, you know, off, you know, off by a point say, well, you look at those two lines, you say, well, something weird's going on here. You know, I, I want to bet on on the on the offensive foul at the place that seems to have it wrong. Does that make sense? You know, it, and, and and you wouldn't necessarily know they have it wrong if you just looked at the one number. If you just looked at the one number, you know, you don't know whether they're pricing that like it's a, a shooting foul or an offensive foul. But when you've got two numbers and you've got two different opinions on what the price should be, you say, well, this guy probably got the information wrong i'm gonna bet the other side against against them right so that that's that's one way you can compare the other way you can compare is between timeouts so like like in football football is a great example because you can actually record what the game state situation was the last time out and you can record some numbers so if you're diligent you can actually like write this stuff down i mean again this is not how i do it because i have a model that kind of keeps track of this stuff and i keep track of it in my head but um Let's say let's say the game, you know, it's it's seven nothing and the the team's, you know, starting to drive on their twenty five yard line. There's six minutes left in the first quarter and everyone puts up the same line. So you write that line down. Okay, that's what the line is. I'm not gonna bet it. Everyone's got the same line, it's probably a good line. Okay. So then they they run a drive, right? And the team gets a first down and then they go, you know, the, then they don't get a first down. They punt the ball. The ball goes to the other team's 20-yard line. So, and three, three minutes goes off the clock. So now there's three minutes left in the first quarter. The, the ball is further back. The other team has the ball, and they're, they're on their own 20. Right? So nothing good has happened for the over. It's, you know, it's been under for three minutes. Right? So now you look at the totals. Now they come out with totals at the new timeout. And now they're different. Right? Two different sports books have different totals. And you say, okay, well, let me compare. I don't know which totals are right. I don't know. I, but what I do know is that everyone agreed at the last time out that the total was X. And now I got two different opinions of what the total is at Y. And, and, and now you can say, well, what happened between, you know, in these last three minutes and try to price that into the total. If one, if one total barely moved, you know, the other one went down by, let's say, a point or a point and a half. The other one went down by like half a point. Well, the one that only went down by half a point is wrong because because under, because too too much under things happened in those three minutes for it only to go down by half a point. So you want to bet under that, you know that that total that's too high. And so so to me that's that's the s- smart way to attack live betting is you're trying to find the mistakes. The, the, again, there's it's it's impossible to get all these lines right. It's very hard to get all the lines right. It's, they're really nowhere close right now. There's mistakes all over the place. And you're really, the, the goal is just to logically pick apart what they're offering you and to find the mistakes logically. You know, you're just saying, well, if this was this and this is now, this can't be right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just like if A and B, then not C kind of thing. And, and that's to me, that's the way to attack the live betting. Yeah, if you're out there listening, you know, we say this, having multiple outs. Okay, well, having multiple outs when you're betting games, that's a good thing. You know, We recommend that. I know it's easier for some people than others. But for live betting, if you are serious about getting involved, 
have multiple outs because I'm telling you, I, I go back and it's it, it, and this kind of brings me to my next point. Ed, it is absolutely fascinating to go back and you know I can do it on my Don Vest screen and go back at the live odds progression at at Pinnacle or Five Dimes or any of those and, and, and like a game that I ju- like I saw yesterday that I, I was involved in I watched you know thoroughly I knew the outcome and to go back and, and look and, and and that's a good starting point I know some of you out there don't have the you know the premium Don Vest in, in fact you can you know if there's a game specifically I have access to the archive if there's a game specifically that you're curious as to to the live odd history of, of what took place hit me up on twitter email whatever you want to do and i'll be happy to copy and paste but uh, just absolutely incredible and then ed kind of expanding on what you talked about the mistakes just it, it's such a a different world because look every saturday morning at nine o'clock offshore las vegas every sports book for the most part has the same number uh, live betting, it is vastly different. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it's, it's incredibly different. You know, there's a three on the Colts game. It's everywhere. Um, and, and live betting, uh, there's a lot of uh, betting uh, uh, opinion. And that's going to bring me here, Ed, in my last point. You know, before we go, I look, I know there's people out there listening. They, they want to know it. They want they want to feel it, uh, Ed. They want to talk about middling because that's what – I think that's the most exciting thing for a lot of guys is they bet live betting just to say that they, they won a middle or even have a middle, have the ability, you know, a chance to win a middle. Um, and, and look, as we know, sports betting has wild swings. College basketball is a good example. that You can track a game live betting, and, and it's – I'm not saying it's happening in every game, but you know, you could see plus 10 on both sides. You know, you got to have the, the, the stars aligned for that, but it happens. So that obviously offers opportunities for, uh, for middles. Now, granted, I'm more of the guy, Eddie, I don't know how you are, but I'm, I'm the type of guy where if I can get plus 10 on a team that closed prior to the game minus five, I'm probably standing pat, but I have come across good middling situations. So what are kind of your thoughts on the concepts of middling, <laughs> particularly with live betting? Well, obviously, you know, I mean, if you got, you know, everybody's got a limited bankroll, you definitely want to lower your risk. But to me, so, so live bets, I mean, typically these markets are dealt with, you know, lots of hold, you know, 6% hold, you know, they'll have minus 15 on each side kind of thing. Um, and if you, if you just pick a bet, the question is, why are you betting the bet, right? So if you flip a coin and you say, I want to bet, you know, you know, this team minus 15, Minus three, minus 15 right now. Well, on average, you're going to lose about 6% of whatever you just bet because you flip the coin to make the bet, right? And that's what the hold in the market is, is, is you know, with the minus 15. Bet, and, 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 and the same is true for in-play betting. And, and the same is true. It doesn't care about what you bet pregame, right? Like, if it, it does not care, right, if you bet plus four pregame, right, and now you can get, you know, plus four the other way in play, but you're still laying minus 15. Well, guess what? The, the, yeah, you're probably going to win, <laughs> but that's because your plus four you made, bet you made pregame is like doing awesome, right? That's why you're probably going to win. You're actually giving a little bit of it back if you just bet the other way into the minus 15. But the way you can do this intelligently is the same, the same thing I was talking about before. Look for the places where the books disagree. Okay, so you have it in your head. Okay, I want to bet the other way because I want to lower my risk. I want to walk in the middle. I want to do all that stuff. Great. So now what you're looking for is you're looking for an opportunity where two sports books are going to have different numbers and the hold is not minus 15 on each side. The hold is, you know, minus 15 one way and plus 13 the other way. Why is it that way? Because it's because the two books have different numbers. Right. And then if the way you want to bet is plus 13, we'll go ahead and pound that. <laughs> Does that make sense? So. So what I would say, the, 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 the key point to me with middling is it's great if you're go, you want to look for a middle, you want to look for a position the other way. That's a, that's a key part of kind of trading a game. But you don't want to just pick the first number that you see and bet the other way because if you do that, you're going to be losing like 6% of that bet. You want to be smarter. You want to still wait. The same principles apply. You want to try, try to wait for the mistakes. You want to try to wait for mis- disagreement between two books so that you get a, a, a better, a, really a better price on the side that you're looking for. And, and so that's what I would say about middling. And, and, and honestly, if I don't find that, if I got the whole game and, you know, for some reason the in-play betting is just, you know, I mean, they're just, they got me this game. I mean, they're just spot on and, and I don't see any opportunities. Well, guess what? I just gamble this game. You know, I don't have to lock in 
my middle if, if they're not going to give me an opportunity. But, you know, the reality is more often than not, especially with the way the, the in-play works today, is, is it, it is rough around the edges. They do make mistakes. The, the sports books do have different numbers. And if you're just patient and you say, I'm trying to find, you know, I'm trying to get a position on, on this other team, you know, if you're patient and you wait for your spot and you wait for that time when, when you know, someone's giving you a, a really good price on it, just pick that up, be like, I'm locked in, and then, and then that's how you're going to make money. Patience, you said it. That was the, I thought that, that, that's the key word, the key word. And this is live betting, in my opinion, the more patient you are, yes, you're, if you, you're going to miss out on opportunities, you, everyone is, okay? But being patient rather than being aggressive, I, I think long-term puts you in a far uh, better position. And I got one question here that just kind of popped into to my mind and talking about the live game markets. The live game markets – uh, inf- you know, how much are they influenced by the closing line? Obviously, early in the game, you know, the, the mar- so uh, let's say a, a football favorite falls behind early, like a big favorite, a college football team laying, you know, 21 and falls behind 14 to nothing. That game is obviously going to be lined a little bit different than uh, if that team was favored by seven. So early on in the game, uh, the the influence of that game, uh, the original game line, the closing line is, is built in. But like, say later in the game, does the live market even care what the original closing point spread on the game was, or what the team's playing, or anything uh, like that? I was always curious on that. What are your thoughts? I mean, this is you just hit. I mean, this is what I've been doing for the last four years. So I I've been built. I mean, I have a I have a you know I, it's a, I have a computer science degree and. I crunch numbers all day long. I mean, this is the problem I'm trying to solve is exactly how much, you know, to, how much to weight that, that pregame line based on what's happened in the game. The, the answer is, you, yes, you always use the pregame line. When, when I make a number, if I make a number and there's, there's two minutes left in the fourth quarter, that pregame line is, is in my number that I'm, that I'm publishing and giving to Sportsbook. That is 100% part of the equation. Now, then the question is, how much do you weight all the new information that you've gotten as the games progressed? You know, how much do you weight information about, about, you know, how the teams are playing? How much do you weight information about, you know, just purely the score, you know, rather than an observation about, yeah, it's 21, nothing. But, you know, it's a few, you know, a few bounces went one team's way and not the other. Versus it's twenty one nothing and they they got no answer for it you know kind of thing. Um, that's the hard problem. I mean, a, as someone who's trying to make these lines for sports books, you know that is exactly the problem we have to solve. Is okay, we've got the pregame line, we've got the score, we've got our model, and now we have to try to intelligently integrate the information, the all the other information, and plus there's betting information. You know, potentially, if I'm a sports book, you know. I mean, you've got customers, and those customers are all banging one side. Well, if every, I mean, people are smart. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, a lot of time in, in sports betting stuff, you know, they talk about the the betting public like they're idiots, you know, and like they got no, you know, they just they can't help themselves. They just have to click on the Red Sox every time. That's not how people are, you know. That's just no. not how that's not how it is. People are smart, you know. If everyone's betting one team, especially if they're betting real money on it, I mean, you better listen to that. <laughs> You better take that seriously, you know. So, so, so that's part of the information that has to go into those lines. So, so the answer is yes. The closing line always matters throughout the game. It's always part of the equation, but it's only part of the equation. And and there's other information that's happened in the game. And and basically, depending on how the game's played out, sometimes you weight that information less, and sometimes you weight it more. The goal in the end is just to try to come up with the best estimate that you can. And that's all you can do. I mean, it, this is a guessing game. There's no real answer. There's no right answer. You know, there's just a reasonable answer, you know, that, that, that a reasonable person could come up with based on the information. And, and that's what we're trying to trying to get to. Yeah, we talked on it earlier in the uh, the segment that that, you know, that NFL line I and mean, that NFL line, Ed, we know it's been up for a week, man. It's been right? bed in new. It's been whittled down. It's been hammered, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's that's a strong number. Uh, the the closing lines of NFL are are very strong numbers, and, and that's kind of what I figured that there it was going to um, um, it was going to be baked in and accounted for. But like you said, a lot of things can once the whistle blows, a lot of things can happen. Injuries, 
I, I can remember one of my best live game betting experiences was uh, it might have been a Mountain West college football game in New Mexico where I clicked on the TV and like kids were getting blown over in the stands. It was so windy. Right. Um, <laughs> You know, and, and no one, no one was the wiser, ex- with the exception of the other guys who are live betting and uh, following the uh, game. So, uh, hey, great stuff here from uh, Ed Miller. You can follow him on Twitter at Ed Miller uh, Poker. The book, uh, go out and get it. It's absolutely uh, fascinating if you're into uh, sports betting. I said it earlier. There's not a good. In fact, I'm at my desk right now, uh, and I, I got a copy. I'm looking at Sharp Sports Betting from Wong right now. Oh and- yeah. You know, and that's a great book, but there, I, I, there, there just really isn't a lot of good, you know, good sports betting discussion, particularly in books. So the book is The Logic of Sports Betting. We encourage you to pick that up on Amazon.com. So thanks again to our guest, uh, Ed Miller. And thank you uh, to our uh, listening uh, audience. Enjoy the games and uh, the Better IQ podcast. We'll be back again tomorrow. 